Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about epilepsy. Epilepsy is a neurological disorder characterized by recurrent seizures that result from abnormal brain activity. Seizures can present in a variety of ways from brief staring episodes to convulsions and loss of consciousness. They can be triggered by different factors such as sleep deprivation, flashing lights and stress and can be associated with other medical conditions or occur without any underlying cause. We differentiate different types of seizures depending in which area or areas of the brain are involved and how the seizure manifests. Two big groups of seizures are partial and generalized seizures. In a generalized seizure, the entire brain is affected by the excess neuronal firing. Those seizures are usually connected to an impaired awareness. A generalized seizure can be either of motor type, so either tonic, clonic or tonic-clonic, or it can be a non-motor seizure, which usually refers to an absence seizure, where a patient will basically suddenly stop all activity and might stare into a blank space. In a tonic seizure, the muscles of the body become tense, while in a clonic seizure, the muscles of the body become relaxed. In a tonic-clonic seizure, there is an interchanging between those types. In a focal or partial seizure, only certain areas of the brain are affected. In a simple partial seizure, one area of the brain fires more than usually and that location stays the same over the entire duration of the seizure. In a complex partial seizure, the excessive neuronal firing starts in one area of the brain, but throughout the seizure the location switches, so the location of the seizure basically jumps from one area to another. It is also possible that a partial seizure develops into a generalized seizure. In a focal or partial seizure, a patient may be of full or impaired awareness. A focal seizure is usually of the motor type, but may also be of the non-motor type. There are also febrile seizures, which typically present in young children. Those seizures are caused by high fever, usually through an infection. Those seizures typically last for less than 5 minutes. Now we discuss the different types of seizures that are good to know. How can we define epilepsy? Epilepsy is an umbrella term for a functional disturbance of the brain in which a patient typically experiences spontaneously reoccurring seizures. A patient is usually said to have epilepsy when one of the following three statements occurs. First, the patient has had at least two non-provoked seizures with a time interval in between them of over 24 hours. Or number two, the patient had a non-provoked seizure and a probability of more than 60% for another seizure in the next 10 years. And the last statement, the patient is diagnosed with the epilepsy syndrome. Epilepsy can affect people of all ages, although it is more common in children and older adults. Children typically have generalized epilepsy, while older adults more often present with focal epilepsy. Epilepsy affects around 0.5 to 1% of all people, while around 2 to 4% of all people experience a solitarily occurring seizure in their life without having epilepsy. The underlying pathophysiology of epilepsy involves the disruption of normal electrical activity in the brain, leading to the generation of abnormal electrical discharges that spread throughout the brain and cause seizures. The brain is composed of millions of neurons that communicate with each other through electrical and chemical signals. 
These signals are generated by the movement of ions across the neuronal cell membrane, which creates an electrical potential across the membrane. In people with epilepsy, the normal balance of neuronal excitation and inhibition is disrupted, leading to excessive excitation and or reduced inhibition of neuronal activity. This can result from various factors, such as genetic mutations, brain injury, inflammation or metabolic disorders, among others. During a seizure, the abnormal electrical discharges in the brain cause a sudden and temporary disruption of normal brain function, resulting in the various symptoms associated with seizures. The symptoms depend on the area of the brain that is affected by the abnormal activity and can range from brief staring episodes to convulsions and loss of consciousness. Epilepsy can be caused by a variety of factors, including genetics, brain injury and developmental disorders. Diagnosis typically involves a detailed medical history, physical examination and neurological tests and may also require imaging tests like MRI and CT scans. How do we diagnose epilepsy? The first step in the diagnosis of epilepsy is taking a comprehensive medical history, including the patient's symptoms and any triggers that may be associated with the seizures. Patients should be asked about the type, frequency and duration of their seizures as well as any aura or warning signs that may precede them. It is also important to inquire about any family history of seizures or other neurological disorders and any prior head trauma or infections. A physical examination should be performed to assess the patient's neurological function and rule out other causes of seizures. The exam should include a detailed evaluation of the patient's mental status, cranial nerves, motor and sensory function, and reflexes. Neurological tests are used to confirm the presence of seizures and identify any underlying causes. These tests may include an electroencephalogram, or EEG, which records the electrical activity of the brain and can help identify abnormal patterns that are characteristic of seizures. An MRI or CT scan may also be ordered to look for structural abnormalities or lesions in the brain that may be associated with seizures. The treatment of epilepsy involves managing the underlying cause, if possible, and controlling seizures through medication or other therapies such as surgery or a ketogenic diet. The goal of treatment is to minimize the frequency and severity of seizures, to improve the quality of life and to prevent complications such as injury from falls during a seizure. How can we manage epilepsy? Living with epilepsy can be challenging both for those affected by the condition and for their families and caregivers. Epilepsy can impact many aspects of daily life, from driving restrictions to social stigma and managing the condition requires ongoing attention and care. Research into epilepsy is ongoing, with a focus on developing better treatments, understanding the causes of the disorder and improving quality of life for those affected. While there is no cure for epilepsy, Advances in medical research have led to significant improvements in the management of seizures and ongoing research is providing hope for a better future for people living with this condition. The treatment of epilepsy typically is divided into acute management of a seizure and a long-term management and prevention of seizures. The acute management of an epileptic seizure consists of several steps to ensure the safety of the patient as the seizure occurs. First, protect the patient. Remove any dangerous objects from the immediate environment and cushion the patient's head 
with a soft object to prevent injury. Usually it is however not recommended to put anything in the patient's mouth as this may lead to choking or injury to the oral cavity and airways. Second, time the seizure. Observe the seizure and note the duration as well as any changes in behavior or consciousness. Third, maintain an open airway. Place the patient on their side to prevent choking on saliva or vomit and loosen any tight clothing around the neck. 4. Administer rescue medication. If the patient has a history of prolonged seizures or status epilepticus, administer a rescue medication such as benzodiazepines. 5. Seek medical attention. If the seizure lasts longer than 5 minutes, if the patient is having difficulty breathing, or if the seizure is part of a cluster of seizures, further first aid measures may be required. And lastly, document the seizure. Record the details of the seizure, including the time of onset, duration and any associated symptoms. This information can be helpful for the patient's ongoing management and treatment. The long-term prevention of seizures involves anti-epileptic medications, which are prescribed based on the type of seizures and the patient's medical history. Typically this involves medications that increase the inhibition and decrease the excitation of the brain. This is usually done by inhibiting glutamate and decreasing the GABA reuptake. Classic anti-epilepsy drugs are barbiturates, carbamazepine, valproic acid and succinamide. Some of the newer anti-epilepsy drugs are vigabatrine, gabapentine and tiragabine. In some cases, surgical intervention or other non-pharmacological treatments may be recommended. A surgical therapy can be to remove the hippocampus and amygdala surgically, to perform a temporal lobe resection, or to remove the area of the brain that is responsible for the development of the seizure. Those surgeries are an option for patients in which pharmacological treatment is unsuccessful. It is important for doctors to closely monitor the patient's response to treatment and adjust medication as needed to control seizures and minimize side effects. Additionally, educating patients and their families about epilepsy and its management is an important part of the treatment process. In conclusion, epilepsy is a neurological disorder characterized by recurrent seizures that can be caused by a variety of factors. Treatment involves managing underlying causes and controlling seizures with ongoing support and care required for those living with the condition. Continued research into epilepsy is essential for improving treatment options and quality of life for those affected. That's it for this video, thank you for watching and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again in the next video.